Hi, my name is Dion Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's Forex and Gold Supply and Demand Fundamental and Technical Analysis. Um, a warm welcome to you if you're new and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you. And if you are watching this video for the first time in my analysis, I combine fundamental and technical analysis to really make the best trading decisions over the medium to long term. So uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you do find the analysis that I provide every week very useful. It's a free way to support the channel and really helps to get the quality um, information that I provide uh, out there. And so let's get into uh, the week ahead and you can find this on tradingeconomics.com, one of my go to sites. And let me just zoom in. Um, on the text. So uh, week ahead in the US, the uh, uh, the inflation rate data will be closely watched, uh, followed by several speeches by the Fed officials and midterm elections. In Europe, investors will monitor the UK uh, third quarter GDP growth and retail sales for euro area. Finally, China is set to publish foreign trade and inflation figures and Indonesia, uh, none of those are uh, countries that we actually trade their currencies. So if you want a more, bit more of a detailed uh, perspective, you, if you go to the week ahead on trading economics, um, they give their analysis right here. So um, as we go into the uh, technicals, starting off with the dollar index and the, uh, the dollar index. So um, looking at this from really a fundamental perspective, uh, let's go to um, what happened during the week. So the US jobs rise while unemployment drops, keeping the pressure on the Fed. So payrolls climbed 263,000 last month. Uh, jobless rate fell to 3.5. Data reaffirms traders' bets for another bid, big sorry, Fed rate hike. And so uh, just uh, reading the first paragraph, the US labor market stayed strong in September as the unemployment rate unexpectedly returned to an historic low, leaving the inflation phobic um, Federal Reserve on course to deliver yet another aggressive rate uh, interest rate hike. Um, and so, you know, the jobs growth remains solid, um, which is uh, decent news for those of you who are actually buying the US uh, dollar. And um, for those of you who actually attended the webinar on um, Thursday, we went over really the uh, fundamental cheat code. Um, and so you should be able now to watch this, uh, this um, webinar or guess, I guess this, uh, this video and understand when I'm talking about inflation and interest rates and the effect that it should have on a currency. And if you missed it, I will be releasing the webinar, but not until 2023. It's really to kind of reward those who did turn up and uh, give those guys really a head start. So I'll release the webinar probably 2023. Unfortunately, if you couldn't make it, um, don't worry, you will get the information. But um, yeah, it won't be for now. But if you, uh, for those of you who did uh, attend and took notes, uh, you can uh, now get start to get a head start on on um, on the other traders in terms of you know generating a trade idea and trade ideas and why you still want to potentially want to go long, not financial advice of course, but why the probabilities are in your favour in order for you to go long. And by the way, if you do want to uh, sign up to the Trading One Eighty Mentorship, enrolment opens on Monday the twenty eighth of November and ends on Friday the second uh, of November and it's the final opening of 2022. The next enrollment may be late January, possibly more likely to be early February 2023. So go to trading180.com. But going back to um, the um, the US dollar and uh, understanding how fundamentals uh, you know, affect the, um, the, the valuation or potentially affect the valuation of, of, uh, of uh, price uh, in the ne in the um, next uh, you know month or two, uh, for me uh, the dollar is still a potential buy, and I understand that you know you can see that there was a massive drop because people would say, well, what's the uh, why is there a, a a big drop on the uh, um, 
on the, uh, on the dollar, right? Dollar index, the dollar index weakened on Friday um, with the expectation that the Fed will hike rates. Now, I always say this in the short term, uh, prices, you know, driven by more, driven by um, liquidity, and the hunt for liquidity uh, and value, right? A lot of people and a lot of traders would have seen the dollar actually, um, you know, uh, positive news around the dollar. Doesn't mean that every single positive news is going to produce uh, positive price action in the short term because if there's not enough liquidity for um, for prices to go higher, then it searches for the liquidity below, which is basically uh, going to stop you know you guys out drawing more traders to go short when it allows you know the smart money to accumulate and go long, right? If that is indeed um, you know going to play out over the short term. And by the way, although as big as a candle was the um, as the market is is um, saying that it's a really big candle to the downside, um, when you when you look at um, you know uh, a candle like this, right? That went down was at eight uh, one point nine two percent on that day. On this day, you know, prices went down nearly two percent, one point nine six percent. That day there was around. Uh, 1.68% and on this day you had uh, about 2% right now just because it you know prices go down um, you know uh, maybe a half um, maybe 2% one and a half maybe 2% doesn't mean it's going to you know the trend is going to continue to the downside right we've seen this we've seen large moves in the past before but yet you've had you know pullbacks right because at some point the market deems um fundamentally the um the dollar to be a potential bargain now um smart money don't necessarily want to buy at highs and if you zoom out you know they're definitely buying at highs right so it's best to you know get traders to go the other way before they start buying now will they buy here or will they buy here for me, nobody knows, no one knows, no one can predict which level, this is a game of probabilities, but the cheaper prices go, especially when you understand that nothing really has changed in terms of the fundamentals. Of course, we have data to come out, we still have inflation data, we still have um, some other data that needs to confirm that the dollar is still a buy, but if, you know, if prices come to the downside, go to the downside, Right, and then inflation comes out, and it's still you know um, above or causing the Fed problems, um, and the economy is still managed to supporting um, rate hikes as well. The economy is still decent enough. Then um, these areas start to look like absolute bargains. So for me, um, my bias is still to buy the dollar. It's just really looking for the uh, the pullback and the bargains, right? And BlackRock, you know this. Um, one of the world's biggest um, uh, hedge funds, uh, BlackRock, BlackRock's uh, rider or reader says uh, Fed may overdo it with rate increases. So brilliant moves can come to uh, can become too restrictive if excessive. And again, we learned this on the uh, on the webinar, right? If you hike too much, yeah, then it can have a, a negative effect on the. Um, on the economy so drop in housing activity is clear sight signal of a slowing economy of course all the economies are slowing though and so um the uh, it says uh, friday's job report showed an economy strong enough to keep the federal reserve raising rates to keep back in uh, keep sorry to beat back inflation black rocks rick reader says just don't overdo it so there's, there's the positive right so it says the fed has to be careful about over tightening or tightening too much the chief investment officer for fixed global income at black rock financial management um uh, incorporated told bloomberg's uh, television tv the open we're moving in the right direction um we're slowing so um positive news sorry positive news um in terms of um the economy and, and jobs but um what they're warning about is just don't overdo it with the with the rate hikes right but the the, the us is in a better position i think um than a lot of other countries which we'll get to so uh, just to wrap up on the dollar um for me, pullbacks. This is, you know, just, just, you know, um, just noise in the short term. And for me, uh, looking to buy the dollar at levels um, 
especially if it comes cheaper down to this 108 and the data supports the narrative. Um, the dollar yen and again dollar yen I think uh, the dollar is still the buy interventions at the moment uh, really haven't um, had any kind of follow through I was talking about this last week and I think really the follow through from any intervention has to be accompanied by um, the Bank of Japan um, really kind of switching gears in terms of their monetary policy. So uh, where are we right now in terms of supply and demand? Uh, we're in this uh, this auction uh, between I think the one oh what we at the uh, sorry the one four nine seventies and the one four five. So any uh, if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar, any pullback I think down to the one four fours is going to be a decent area to now start to look for potential buyers even better would be the one four ones i think and if you do want to get short on the dollar and buy the yen right then i think those that one five one area is going to be um really good for a potential sell um this should be accompanied by some sort of uh, ministry of finance intervention if it starts to go higher above there as well as uh, this is you know can, this has been basically a line in the sand but not really a pair that i'm interested in trading to be fair only really um looking at that as um, a guide as to why I want to possibly buy the yen um, in the future. Uh, my bias is to buy the yen, but I need to see it really at the 152s, 153s before I look to buy the yen. Uh, looking at the um, the dollar Swiss, and I was saying last week, you can see the analysis on here from last week, um, that I was saying that if prices do come up here and you think this Swiss franc is a buy, then look to by the Swiss franc, which is basically selling the US dollar. And you can see it pretty much pinged off of that. I did like that technically, but I just don't like it really fundamentally. I wouldn't buy the Swiss franc over the uh, the dollar. But where we're at now, um, I think any kind of pullbacks deeper into the one, uh, sorry, the 0 uh, 098 area, I think is decent for a potential buyer, even the zero nine seven fifties i think are decent for uh, potential uh, buyers if you're looking at buying the dollar swiss again two central banks i'm not really um looking to uh, trade against each other um but if i did obviously it would be the dollar i think the dollar is definitely stronger than the, uh, the swiss franc or the swiss national bank but um i would really want to pull back um uh, probably a deeper pullback before I look for any kind of long trades. I mean, you can look for even a, a trade at again the 99 um, cent area as well. If that is your bias, uh, dollar CAD and again dollar CAD it really has come down um, to uh, this uh, demand zone. Again, the, the best areas to always look for or buy trade is the first touches of demand. Um, and uh, we've had obviously seen this drop on the on the um, on the US dollar, a weakening US dollar. So um, if you do want to get involved in this, then a drop down to the one three twos will be you know really nice. Not really a pair again that I'm interested in in taking uh, simply because the divergence. Although I think the US dollar is probably better than you know the Canadian dollar. Um, I still don't think the divergence is, is big enough for me to want to get involved in this. But what you did see as well is prices did come up to this 137, 138 area, then, you know, sell off. If you do think that you want to get short by the Canadian dollar versus the US dollar, then a pullback into the 137s, I think is decent for a pullback before looking at getting, uh, looking at getting short. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar. New Zealand dollar's having a bit of a rally, zooming out a bit. Um, uh, there's been talk, in fact, of COVID restrictions being lifted uh, potentially in China. And um, if it does, then the uh, the commodity currencies, especially the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar, are going to be um, uh, really, you know, I think, are buys um, because risk, uh, hopefully, with China coming back online that lifts uh, global sentiment, global economy, China start to um, grow again. And, uh, you know, the beneficiaries will be the commodity currencies, especially uh, the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar as their um, China's uh, biggest uh, importers and exporters, right? Business partners. And so 
if we start to see that, um, I think any pullbacks into, especially down into these 55 cent areas, I think are gonna be very, very nice for a potential buy. Um, there is some support and resistance around here as well. Uh, where there is some confluence. So, right there. So if you're an intraday trader, then you'd probably just look for any kind of pullback down into uh, this area here. But I do think that the um, towards the, the bottom end of this is where really the bargain is because it was proven a bargain back on, you know, um, in October, mid-October. Prices have gone to the upside, so a move back down to here, I think, is decent buy, a decent buy. But you'd have to really believe, again, it have to be accompanied by um, China reopening. Uh, pound, dollar, um, I was saying last week I'm in this trade, took some profit, actually, right at these lows. Um, and that was really due to um, understanding um, uh, Mark, Mor um, Mark Chapman's um, market maker. Um, business model and understanding that in fact there were some market makers that were uh, uh, probably uh, looking to um, stop kind of prevent you know prices from going to the downside so um, if you do want to also have a watch of Mark's um, a half of the webinar that we did on Thursday please uh, do a YouTube search for the Underground Traders Alliance I'll see if I can remember to put a link uh, to his channel as well and definitely watch um, his uh, his webinar where he talks about um, uh, market makers being uh, active and passive right and I think they were definitely more active around here and at the end of uh, at the end of Thursday in the webinar I was looking at my uh, my trade I was up a good few hundred pips on one of my positions and I took um, some profit off that so glad that I did still got a small position running and I do think that prices should eventually roll over to the 110s I think this is just you know a short-term pullback but it's always good to um, to uh, take profit along the way but where are we now uh, we've at if you're looking to you know buy there that would be where the demand zone is for me though my bias is to the short side and so I'm looking at levels of supply so um, looking at supply there we did have a touch there where I originally ended up getting in on there and there as well so I think any pullbacks um, is okay i think is around is, is is okay a pullback around here um i do think anything above or towards the 117 is going to be a fantastic uh, uh sell trade or a buy for the uh for the us dollar that is providing obviously that the narrative of the pound and uh looking at the uh the uk in fact let's um let's look at the pound here we are it says pound to lead uh uk market suffering as bank of england flags long recession so sterling is weak a week's worst performer among major currencies slumping gilt futures trading data points to buyers uh, strike it's a gloomy forecast for the long uk recession by the bank of england have renewed bets on a uh, slide in the pounds so of the currency is already heading for its worst year since 2008 and investors see little upside for sterling in coming months some are betting on another fall below the 110s by the end of the year oh, sorry after it tumbled this week in the worst performance among major currencies and you can see it's uh you know easy to understand uh why um, you know the Bank of England pretty much saying that the uh, uh, the, the UK is probably going to go into a, a, a long uh, recession, um, uh, and as well just to understand again trade divergence ideas and what I teach. This is uh, something that um, was in Bloomberg as well. So chart in the global economy. So the Fed, the Bank of England diverge on rate hike paths, and this is quite interesting. So the Federal Reserve and Bank of England both boosted interest rates by 75 basis points this week, but communicated different messages regarding how high borrowing costs need to go in order to tame inflation. Borrowing costs meaning interest rates. After what was initially seen as somewhat dovish policy statement, Fed Chair Jerome Powell told reporters after the announcement that the ultimate level of interest rates will be higher than previously expected. Yeah, so uh, you know the market should be pricing in um, a higher 
horrible higher interest rates than what they were before the FOMC meeting, right? Officials in the UK went the other direction saying peak rates will be lower than priced into financial markets. So, um, you know, that pretty much says everything you really need to know when it comes to understanding which way, you know, price is likely to go over the medium to long term, right? Um, so any pullbacks shouldn't be seen as, you know, for me anyway, and not reversals in, 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 um, in price it just means you can add into a trade you know obviously take profits along the way when you're up you know a few hundred pips you know you know shave some some uh, some profits off to get yourself into a nice profitable position so even if prices do pull back and you know stop out that position i'm already in profit and so it doesn't really matter but the uh the point is is that just looking at these uh moves to the upside should be looked at as buying opportunities really for the stronger currency which in my opinion is the us dollar and uh that would be the uh the path of travel so again we've seen some forecasts to one tens and below potentially if um you know this week the uk come out um and the uh the the gdp isn't um isn't great right it goes into the negative now if the uk avoid a recession because if there is every chance that it could avoid a technical we'll say a recession but contraction and go into the negative um then that might rally the pound right and that will in turn um the market has to revalue what the pound is worth but if the um if the data supports the narrative of a weaker pound then you should expect at least over again towards the end of the year because we're half no, i would say halfway the beginning of, of november we probably got maybe about four weeks worth of trading active trading left before the market starts to go on holiday maybe four or five weeks um you know um i think towards the end of the year that should really be the path um uh, of the of the pound but again it depends on what happens with gdp this week Moving on to the euro dollar again, euro dollar pretty similar to for me the uh, the pound in terms of the travel of direction. Really, any pullbacks on the euro um, are um, shorting opportunities for me. So pull back into that zone there is really nice. And we also have um, a supply zone above that. So again, any this is a decent area of of supply. Um, to get uh, short, so again the, the 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 move up isn't because for me the uh, the euro is 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 just suddenly stronger, right? Um, if anything, it just just a, a a reaction to what's happened on the uh, the US dollar, and in fact um, there is uh, Maersk uh, sees Europe close uh, to a recession with the US not far behind, so. Um, again, one of the trading ideas that I uh, show traders is uh, leading and lagging. So who is the, um, or which economy is likely to go into a recession first? And that's really the, the economy that you should look to sell. Um, again, it's not financial advice, but um, you know, the shipping giant uh, says container market is also uh, will also shrink or may also shrink in 2023. The workhorses of global trade are coming off record profits. So uh, you, uh, Europe is close to entering a recession and the US economy may not be far behind. And so, um, you know, this this is from the um, uh, the gentleman at Mayoresk. It says that is a start message Wednesday from AP Muller Mayorisk AS, the world's number two container carrier and a bellwether for the 29 trillion market uh, dollar market for global trade. And he, and he says, uh, it's really hard to be very optimistic with a war on our doorstep and a bigger energy crisis this winter. So the so that is impacting consumer confidence and therefore also demand, Mayorisk CEO Soren Sku said in an interview on Bloomberg TV. It's quite likely that we are, that we either are or will be soon in a recession, certainly in Europe, but potentially also in the US. And obviously these guys are global shipping containers. They can they they know you know what's happening around the globe. They're in tune, right? They can see the data, they can see what's happening, trade. And uh, you know, this gentleman here is saying that um, the 
euro is likely to be in a recession sooner than the dollar, right? So that's, you know, for me, again, it's just uh, the trade idea, um, any pullbacks, short trades. Um, again, not financial advice. Of course, if you want to be a buyer of the of the euro, you know, this was a nice uh, area to look for potential buy trades uh, in that area of demand, right? Um, so, you know, there was an opportunity to buy, you know, price doesn't move in a straight line, of course, but um, overall, you know, you can have a bias um, one way if you understand where prices are likely to go in the uh, over the medium to long term. In the short term, you're going to get, you know, this happen. But um, for me, it's uh, uh, still to the downside. Aussie dollar. Um, again, I spoke about this uh, similar, very similar uh, to the New Zealand dollar. I think any pullbacks, right? If China um, starts to reopen, I think any pullbacks are going to be really nice buying opportunities uh, for the Australian dollar um, as a commodity currency. But if you are looking for any kind of sell trades, again, that's a decent area there. Even better would be here and here if you believe that the uh, US dollar is going to be is remaining you know the stronger of the two and the uh, and risk off sentiment which should help the US dollar over the uh, commodity currency like the uh, Australian dollar um, Aussie do, um, Aussie yen sorry we've uh, had again a bit of a change in sentiment when it comes to um, risk sentiment so potentially again the china story driving prices you know to the upside with the australian dollar so any pullbacks if, if prices do pull back and the story does have some legs right in terms of it is true china is reopening then i think this is going to be really a really nice buy so we had a nice buy right here i think anywhere around here second you know touches of levels aren't necessarily you know better than the first touches first touches are always you know the best um, areas to look for buy trades but i think any pullbacks around this 90 uh, area should be decent for a potential buy if it's supported by um you know positive risk of sentiment as well as as well um the bank of japan not looking to intervene so that's decent uh and gold finally gold um gold has been benefiting or benefited from a weaker dollar but also fundamentally um i do think that i'm just trying to find the story on gold right here we are so who are the mystery buyers um responsible for central bank gold boom so purchases from central banks hit a record last quarter the world gold council says uh, that included substantial amount of unreported buying and this was november the first the central banks bought a record amount of gold last quarter as they diversified foreign currency reserves with a large chunk of the purchases coming from as yet unknown buyers so um again the as I've been saying for the past uh, few months, as prices have been coming down, the smart money, they accumulate over time, right? They have to, this is what's been happening. Whereas, um, you know, and they're, they're buying a value. And if you zoom out, of course, this is, you can see obviously where they've been buying gold for cheap, because especially if next year um, we, we're seeing global recessions, right? In terms of the US, uh, the UK and Europe, then gold will be a really, really nice buy and there was also a um where was it uh yeah so uh this was a, a video as well on bloomberg gold won't go much lower world gold council ceo so he thinks that the horizon for gold in the relatively near future is positive yeah so um of course you know he does have maybe a bit of an agenda but um, it makes sense fundamentally when you look at, you know, the bigger picture um, where gold is, is, is basically been a bargain. Right. So this was where the institutions said that gold is a, is a bargain here and they've been buying here and also buying here. So I think any pullbacks, I think in this area, I think are going to be decent buyers very decent buys and even if prices do come you know below that to the 1600s i still think that um again once the uh, fed start to um you know ease up on interest rates start to 
um, the interest rate cycle does start to end and uh, the, the narrative of recession starts to come into play. Um, this is where the smart money would have been buying and uh, yeah, probably see some potential upside in gold and silver. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. I uh, hope you have a great trading week and uh, thank you for all the feedback on the webinar for those of you who attended. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, for those of you who didn't attend, unfortunately, uh, I will be I will be releasing it. That's the good thing. The bad news is that it won't be until uh, next year. So um, I hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care and speak to you all soon.